What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? How are you guys doing? Uh, that little intro there, uh, it was my first attempt at making a 3D render. Uh, and it's a render of a product that I've never seen before and a product that actually doesn't exist at the time of recording this. Uh, and I'm recording this in late April of 2020. Uh, and so uh, bear with me a little bit as I try to come up with some sort of way to represent a product uh, because it is a product that I'm very interested in. And the product is called the Garmin Vector Air. Uh, and it's both a power meter and an aero meter. Uh, and it's a product that we're fairly sure is coming in the near future. Uh, and it's a product that I think all triathletes uh, or time trialists should be very interested in. So in this video, we're gonna go over all the details about the product, or at least all the product details that we're fairly confident about. Uh, and we're actually fairly confident about a lot of the details because uh, there was a bit of a leak late last November. And after we go over the details that we know about, uh, I wanna take a little time to talk about why this product uh, is important. Uh, I wanna talk about competitive products on the market. Uh, and just some tips and tricks for using a product like this. Uh, and I'll probably throw out a little bit of science uh, or a little bit of explanation on how a product like this works, uh, just so you'll have a fuller understanding of what we're talking about uh, and what are some of the weaknesses of aerometers in general. Okay, so let's start off with the basics. Uh, this product is gonna be both an affordable power meter uh, or if paired with a direct force power meter, it's gonna be able to produce and provide live CDA values uh, and live wind speed. So a bit of a dual purpose product there. So let's first talk about this product as an affordable power meter from Garmin. Uh, and if you're not familiar with power meters, uh, they're a popular tool for cyclists to measure uh, just how much force they're applying to the drive train of the bike uh, to propel them forward uh, and power meters are used by cyclists and coaches uh, to base all of their efforts and training uh, as well as racing plans and it's a tool that I found invaluable when I'm doing structured workouts uh, as well as just overall I feel like power meters have improved my own personal cycling. Uh, and this product is slated to cost about $300 US, uh, which would put it on the uh, very affordable side of power meters that are currently on the market. I feel like there's a couple other power meters on the market that are kind of right in line there, uh, but those are definitely the most affordable power meters on the market at that $300 range. Uh, and Garmin does already make one of the best power meters on the market. It's called their Garmin Vector Series, uh, and they're a pedal-based power meter, and they're on their third generation uh, they have both their Vector 3 uh, and their Vector 3S, uh, and those cost somewhere between $600 and $1,000, uh, depending on whether or not you have the single-sided power meter pedal or the dual power meter pedals. And while the Vector 3, uh, as well as most power meters on the market, use a strain gauge to measure force, uh, this new product, the Garmin Vector Air, uh, it would use the force of relative wind coming in, uh, along with a whole bunch of other metrics like you and your bike's weight, uh, your speed, your acceleration, uh, the barometric data, uh, as well as a ton of other information to estimate the amount of force that you're putting in at any given time. Uh, and so that will provide you with a live power meter number as well. So uh, if that sounds complicated, uh, it's because it is complicated uh, and I'm grossly simplifying things, uh, but I'm probably gonna continue to do so. Uh, but one big takeaway, if you're trying to figure out this stuff, uh, would just be that this product can function as a very affordable power meter. But what I'm actually way more excited about uh, is the fact that if you take this product uh, and you pair it with a direct force power meter uh, and a speed sensor, that it can actually work to provide you with live CDA numbers while you ride. Uh, and think of that live CDA number uh, is kind of a real time view of how much speed you're losing due to aerodynamic drag. Uh, and CDA stands for coefficient of drag area. And athletes have been trying to reduce that number forever. Uh, they do that by kind of changing body position on the bike, uh, changing clothing, uh, changing bike equipment, even changing the bike itself to try to reduce drag so that when they're cycling that they can go as fast as possible for any given effort. 
So you can imagine an example where uh, you or I make some sort of small adjustment with our head position on the bike, uh, and we see that reduction in CDA, uh, and that number translates to saving us maybe 20 seconds in a 40K bike time trial or something like that. So lowering that CDA can be very valuable. And the Vector Air does that by using the force of the relative wind. Uh, it also uses your speed uh, and the given amount of power that you're putting out. Uh, and it uses all of that to calculate how much drag you and your bike are creating. And these aerometer devices typically have a few sensors, uh, but the key one is definitely that pitot tube uh, that kind of sits out of front of the device itself. Uh, and not to get super technical, uh, but think of the pitot tube as measuring the dynamic air pressure uh, and comparing it to the static air pressure uh, just to get that air velocity. Uh, and they're mostly used in places like airplanes. You might see them kind of hanging off the wing of an airplane. Uh, and they're, used in act they're actually used in a ton of different products. Uh, but we shouldn't expect these aerometer devices uh, that are coming out onto the market uh, to be this perfect representation of CDA. Uh, they should highly correlate to tests done in wind tunnels, uh, but it's still gonna be difficult for these devices to account for things like wind turbulence, uh, high yaw angles, uh, and definitely things like road conditions. I don't expect this product to show uh, rolling resistance numbers, uh, but it's still a product that I'm super bullish on. Uh, this whole technology I'm excited about uh, because devices like this are gonna allow normal triathletes and pro triathletes for that matter uh, to get a much better idea of their aerodynamic position uh, without having to go and visit a wind tunnel and paying thousands of dollars to do testing. Uh, additionally, because this device can live on your bike long term, uh, it should be easier to kind of train a position. Uh, and, you know, train a position by that I mean uh, when you're out training on a day to day basis, uh, you can reinforce that positive body position uh, that should save you time by lowering your drag on the bike. And with solid repeatable tests, you know, a specific test location uh, and some good benchmark data, I think athletes should be able to test all kinds of different equipment with a device like this uh, and figure out which equipment tests faster uh, with their own personal setup. Uh, because we definitely need to keep in mind that different equipment will test differently for different people, uh, as well as combinations of different equipment will test differently. It's always been nearly impossible for any sort of person that's familiar with aerodynamics to say that helmet X is always gonna be faster than helmet Y. Uh, and yes, I am aware that there is way more to cycling than aerodynamics. Uh, you obviously have to have a position on the bike where you can produce power, uh, you have to be able to breathe. Uh, if you want to race fast, you need to be comfortable as you race. Uh, but to do this type of testing at only $300, I feel like is a hell of an option. And there are other companies that are making similar products. Uh, there's a company called Velocomp. Uh, they make a product called Aeropod uh, and it's priced at $400. Uh, there's another company called Swiss Side. Uh, I'm not sure if their product is actually on the market yet, uh, but they seem to have a product that has two of those pitot tubes. There's another company called Aerolab uh, that makes one that has an extremely accurate altimeter, uh, but I think that they're targeting bike manufacturers, uh, maybe some of the pro teams, uh, as well as they might put together some sort of coaching packages in the near future, uh, but I wasn't able to find a price on that particular device. Uh, and another company called Notia, uh, they're a small company that kind of splintered out from Argon 18, uh, which is a bike manufacturing company. Uh, and they make a product called the Notio Aerometer. Uh, and that one costs $950. Uh, and the Notio is currently a device that I'm super interested in. Uh, it's a very compelling offer. Uh, they seem to have a lot more sensors packed into that particular device. Uh, and they just seem to be aiming to make a product that does a lot more than just aero testing. Uh, the goal with that product, I think, is to eventually be able to uh, look at metrics like rider movement on the bike uh, and just other factors that could affect performance. So there are other companies trying to make similar devices, uh, and my gut feeling is that this product category is really ready to explode. But as far as specifically for the Garmin Vector Air, uh, we have no idea when or even if this product will ever launch. 
Uh, in late November, Garmin mistakenly published the product on their website, uh, listing all the details on the price and the specs of the product uh, without any pictures. Uh, and they quickly pulled this product down from their website, but not before people were able to capture a, quite a few screenshots of all the details of the device. Uh, and so we actually know a fair amount about the device and how it's going to look. Uh, for example, we know that it's gonna be uh, about 68 millimeters in width, uh, about 50 millimeters in height, uh, so it's not a huge device at all. I just have this little box, which is about the same size. Uh, as far as depth goes, uh, this box is about twice as deep as the 20 millimeter device will be. Uh, and then we know that it's probably gonna have one of those uh, pedo tubes that will stick out the front, uh, maybe something like this. And I'm guessing Garmin might have run into some sort of manufacturing difficulties when working on this product, or it definitely could be due to the COVID-19 crisis that we're going through, or maybe leadership just chose to go a different direction. Uh, who knows, but I still find it fun to speculate on the product. And this product category is one that I definitely want to keep a close eye on. I'm planning uh, three or four more videos talking about aerometers in the near future. So if you're not subscribed, uh, jump on it. Uh, you got to do that. Uh, and as always, I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. And we will see you guys on the next one.